Today we are doing lessons 5.1 and 5.2, ratios, rates, and proportions. Our I can statements for today, I can find ratios, rates, and unit rates, including ones involving fractions. I can determine if two ratios form a proportion, and I can solve multi-step problems with ratios and proportions. So for our first type of problem, they're gonna give you a situation and they're gonna ask you to find a ratio. Ratio is comparing those two numbers similar in a way that a fraction compares two numbers, but instead of a part to whole relationship like a fraction, it's just showing two parts together. So our situation here is there are 45 males and 60 females in a subway car. The subway car travels two and a half miles in five minutes. So the first one says find the ratio of males to females. So there are um, three different ways that you can write ratios. You can write them with a colon, with a fraction bar, or with the word two. So you can choose the form that you like best, usually for ratios. A lot of times I write them with a colon, so that's what I'm gonna do. 45 males to 60 females. I could have also written it this way, 45 260 or with a fraction bar 45 260 this way either is fine all right and then I need to simplify it just like I would if it was a fraction so I look for um, a common factor something I can divide them both by I know that both 45 and 60 are divisible by 15 if I do 45 divided by 15, I get three. And 60 divided by 15 is four. So the ratio of males to females, same order as it is here, is three to four. Now we're gonna find the speed of the subway car. This is not a ratio comparing two parts, it's actually a rate that is saying how one thing is comparing to another and they're related and depending on each other. So for our car, it's 20, um, two and a half miles in five minutes. So when we have speed, we always do distance divided by time. So two and a half miles over five minutes. A lot of times we write rates with a fraction compare those two parts. Okay, so this means divided by. When I want to find a unit rate, so for this one, speed, how many miles per minute, I end up having to divide. So I'm going to just set up my division this way. Two and a half divided by five. Five does not go into two a whole number of times. It does go into 25 five times. So my simplified rate is one half mile per minute. I like to write the slash for my second symbol there on a rate, but you could write miles for one minute in one minute. You could do 0.5 over one, um, but that's my rate. My speed is how much per minute or hour or whatever your unit is. All right, let's look at our second example. So this is a ratio table, and a ratio table um, shows how things are being compared and um, in a way that has a pattern, a multiplication-based pattern. So it says the ratio table shows the cost for different amounts of artificial turf. Find the unit rate in dollars per square foot. Unit rate me, um, here means how much for one. So I want to know how much for one square foot. So I'm just going to squeeze in an extra column here. I want to know for one square foot, how many dollars? So here's our pattern on our ratio table. We are multiplying by four. So it's 25 square feet costs $100. And if I multiply both those by four, then 100 square feet is $400. If I multiply by four again, I've got 400 and 1,600. From one column to the next, whatever I multiply on the top, I have to multiply on the bottom. But I can also work backwards. 
It doesn't always have to be times four, it can be times anything. On this one, I'm going to divide. So I'm thinking 25 to get it to be one, if I'm using a multiplication or a division pattern, would be like dividing by 25. And to keep that ratio table the same, I need to divide on the bottom by 25. All right, well, 25 divided by 25 is one. 100 divided by 25, that's gonna give us four. I'm gonna write out my work over here. 100 divided by 25 equals four. So what is my unit rate in dollars per square foot? That means $4 per square foot. That means how much for one square foot. All right, let's take a look at this next one. So here's another ratio table. This ratio table shows the distance that the International Space Station travels while orbiting Earth. Find the speed in miles per second. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Okay, let's check our answer. So um, I'm gonna add in an extra column here. I wanna know how much for one per second means how much for one second. So one second, what's gonna be the distance? So I'm gonna work backwards like I did in the last one to get from three to one if we're using multiplication or division, which is what we have to use in a ratio table. We would divide by three. So we also need to take 14 and four tenths, divide by three to figure out how much for one. So off to the side here, I'm gonna do 14 and 4 tenths divided by three. Three does not go into one, it does go into 14. Um, let's see, that would be four times. Four times three is 12. We subtract to get two, we bring down that four, and we bring up the decimal. Three goes into 24 eight times exactly. So I have four and eight tenths. So our speed in miles per hour would be 4.8 miles, ooh, not miles per hour, miles per second, miles for each second. On a rate, you've got two important labels there, miles and seconds, you have to have both parts. You can't just write miles. 4.8 miles means that's your distance. 4.8 miles per second means how fast you're going. It's a very different thing. All right, let's take a look at this graph. It says this graph shows the speed of a subway car. Find the speed in miles per minute. Compare the speed to the speed of the subway car in example one. So here there's actually two things they need us to do. The first thing, find the speed, and then two, we've got to compare the speed. So we've got two things to try to do. So we'll start by just finding the speed. I can pick either one of these points on my graph to help me find my um, rate. So this one half and one fourth, this is the pair, the order pair that I'm gonna use to help me find my um, speed. So when we did our speed before, remember we had the distance, miles on the top, and we had the time, minutes on the bottom. That's speed, miles per minute. This is the order it has to be in. That's what they tell us off to the side here, miles per minute. So my minutes is on my x-axis here. It's how far over I'm going. So it looks like I'm going over one half. So one half is my minute. And then my miles is my vertical distance. That's my second part of my order pair, one fourth. So one fourth miles and one half minute and I need to figure out for one minute how many miles well, let's see I know again we're looking at ratios and rates so we can multiply if we multiply something on the bottom we have to multiply the same thing on the top just like a fraction would I know if I do one half times two I can get that to equal one so I can do one fourth times two Let's see, I'll do it off to the side here. One fourth times two over one gives me two fourths, which gives me one half. 
one half mile per minute. Now I saw that I could do times two times two, but remember this fraction bar also means division. So a different way to do this problem is to do this, one fourth divided by one half, top divided by bottom, and then do our keep change flip and we end up with uh, the problem that we had above. Equals two fourths, which simplifies to one half. Okay, that's one. <clears throat> we found our speed. Now we need to compare it. So we're gonna go back to example one, which was this one. And the speed was 5 tenths miles per minute. This one is 1 half miles per minute. 5 tenths and 1 half means the same. So to compare them, we're going to write they are the same speed. When they ask you to compare something in math, they, ask, they want you to determine which one is bigger or are they the same. So they are the same speed. All right, number two, you use the point three, one and a half to find the speed of the subway car. Does your answer change? Explain your reasoning. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own. Okay, let's check our answer. So here I have, um, if I go back and look at my other one, miles is going on the top, minutes is going on the bottom, and if I go back and look at my first one, the first number represented my minutes and the second number represented the miles. So if I'm first number three represents the minutes, my second number one and a half represents my miles. This means one and a half divided by three. One and a half divided by three. Okay, so I'm going to have to change my one and a half into a improper fraction, three halves, divided by three over one. Got to keep change flip, so three halves times one third. Three times one is three, two times three is six. Three six equals one half, so did our answer change? No. It is still one half mile per minute. All right, example four. It says you mix a half cup of yellow paint for every three fourths cup of blue paint to make 15 cups of green paint. How much yellow paint and blue paint do you use? So there are a couple different ways to sh solve this one. This is a tricky type of problem. So I'm gonna show you two different methods that you can use for the same problem. And then when you see similar problems in your homework or on a test, you can decide which strategy you like best. So method one is a ratio table. So here I have columns for yellow paint, blue paint, and total, which is the green. If you mix the yellow and the blue, you get green paint. Okay, so one half cup of yellow paint for every three fourths cup of blue paint makes basically like one batch of green paint. So in order to figure out the total here for each row, we have to add. And with fractions, you have to find a common denominator. So instead of one half, I'm gonna multiply by two over two. I'm gonna make it into two fourths plus three fourths equals five fourths. I'm gonna actually keep that as an improper fraction here because my next step is going to be multiplying in my ratio table, just like we multiplied in the ratio tables over here in example two and number one, we multiplied from row to row. We're gonna do the same thing here, except instead of side to side, we're gonna do it up and down. So I have five fourths. I wanna get rid of that fraction part on the bottom. It'll make it easier for me to do my ratio table. So to get rid of that divided by four, I'm gonna times by four. And I need to do it to every row in order for my ratios 
to stay the same. So I'm going to times by 4 here. I'm going to times by 4 here. That basically gets rid of my denominator. I'll show you why off to the side. So I'll do my yellow first. 2 fourths times 4 over 1. My 4's cross cancel and it leaves me with 2. 3 fourths times 4 over 1. My 4's cross cancel and it leaves me with 3. 5 fourths times 4 over 1. The 4's cross cancel and it leaves me with 5. So multiplying by that denominator basically cancels it out. It leaves me with nice whole numbers. Let's check 2 cups of yellow plus 3 cups of blue equals 5 cups of um, green. Okay, great. That makes sense. Now I need to see how much I actually need to get to 15. So here from 5 cups to 3 cups, uh, I'm sorry, 5 cups to 15 cups, I'm going to have to multiply by 3 because this is 3 times bigger than this kind of middle batch that we made. So we're going to have to do times 3 to every column to keep those ratios the same. So 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 6 cups yellow plus 9 cups blue does equal 15 cups of green. So my answer here is 6 cups yellow and 9 cups blue paint. That's my answer. So ratio is one way table to do it. Multiply to get rid of the denominator and then see how much more you need to multiply by to get to your target number. So same exact problem. Here's a different way to do it. So if you don't want to do a big um, ratio table, you can also find the fraction of the total. So here's what you do. You take one of the things, we're going to take yellow paint, and you're going to figure out how much yellow paint there is for um, the total amount of green paint. So there's one half cup of yellow paint for every five fourths, that five fourths came from here, five fourths, cup of green paint. You have to add the two fourths for the yellow plus the three fourths for the blue to get five fourths. So one half out of five fourths. Then I need to actually do that division. One half divided by five fourths. Keep change flip, one half times four fifths. All right, let's see, I'll just multiply straight across. Four times one is four, two times five is 10. Fractions, you always need to simplify if you can simplify. 2 fifths. So when I did 1 half yellow paint for every 5 fourths cup green, I get the ratio of 2 fifths. That means yellow paint makes up 2 fifths of every cup of green paint. So now I take this times the total to figure out how much yellow paint is used. So 2 fifths times 15 over 1. I'm going to cross cancel here. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 2 times 3, 6 cups of yellow paint used. So if there's 15 cups total, and 6 of them are yellow, that means that we have 9 cups of blue paint. So that's a different way of doing it. Combining, seeing how much paint you have in one batch, and then dividing to figure out what fraction of yellow paint there was in one batch. And then multiplying that by the total amount of paint you have to find out how much you would need. So same problem, two different ways to solve it. All right, so all of that was 15.1. Let's go ahead and take a look at 15.2. So key idea of proportion is an equation stating that two ratios are equivalent, which means equal. 
two quantities that form a proportion are proportional. So this proportion is read two is to three as four is to six. It looks like two thirds to four six, um, but it's, it's a comparison of those values. Okay, so tell whether six fourths and eight twelfths form a proportion. So there are a lot of different strategies that you can use for this. So I'll show you a couple different ways and then you can always pick the one you like the best. So six fourths, does that equal eight twelfths? Well, let's see. Okay, so one way to do it would be to find a common denominator. I know fourths and twelfths can become twelfths. So if I do six times three, I get 18. And four times three, I get 12. 18 twelfths, nope, that's not the same thing as eight twelfths. So no. Another way to do it is to do simplest form. So if I do six fourths, and I simplify it by dividing by two, I get three halves. And then if I simplify eight twelfths, and I divide by four, I get two thirds. These are not equal. If it has to be a um, simplest form has to be the same. And then one last way to check is by using cross products. If you have two proportions that are proportional, if you multiply the diagonals, they'll be the same. So eight times four is 32. Six times 12 is 72. No, 32 and 72 are not the same. So you can find a common denominator. You could simplify the fractions. You could do cross products. You could also make them into decimals and see if the decimal forms are the same. So there's lots of different ways to compare. All right, so we're looking at ratio tables here. So tell whether X and Y are proportional. When we have a ratio table like this one, the best way to check is to see if there's a multiplication or division pattern that's the same for the whole table. So this one has fractions and whole numbers. We're gonna start with the whole numbers to look for our pattern and then we'll see if it's true for our fractions. So I'm thinking multiplication and division for multiple, uh, ratio tables. To get from one to six, I would have to multiply by six. One times six equals six. So in order for it to be proportional, that means all of them have to be true. So let's check the other whole number one first. Two times six is 12. Yep, that's true. Okay, so let's check with the fractions. One half times six, now I need to do six over one. Okay, so let's see, two divided by two is one, and six divided by two is three. One times three is three, yep, that's right. Let's try this one, three over two times six over one. This one I'll just multiply straight across. Six times three is 18, two times one is two, 18 halves, yep, that equals nine. So yes, when we multiply x times six, we get our y values. You need to support this type of problem with work, such as what I have in the table here, not just a yes or a no. All right, I mentioned this before, but they're going to formally show you the strategy here. Cross products in the proportion a is to b as c is to d, the products a times d and b times c are called cross products. That's because they're on the diagonals from each other. Um, so cross products of a proportion are equal. So two thirds and four sixths are equivalent fractions. And when we set them up like a proportion and we multiply on the diagonal, we get equal values here. We have two times six, that's 12, and three times four, that's 12. So you can check those cross products, and if they're equal, that means it's a proportion. All right, so let's take a look at a story problem here. You swim your first four laps in two and four tenths minutes. You complete 16 laps in 12 minutes. Is the number of laps proportional to your time? 
So I'm going to start by just writing them like fractions and I'm going to put my labels in because it's important that I line things up right. Four laps, two and four tenths minutes. And then I'm looking, does it equal the same thing as 16 laps? in 12 minutes. All right, lots of different ways that we can do this. So we'll go ahead and use the cross product skill since they just mentioned it in the last one. I know 4 times 12 equals 48. I don't know 16 times 2 and 4 tenths. Off the top of my head, so I need to do the long multiplication. Six times four is 24. Four times one is four, plus two is six. I need a placeholder zero. Two times six is 12. Two times one is two, plus one is three. Four plus zero is four. Six plus two is eight. Three one decimal, one decimal. So when I multiplied the four times 12, I got 48. When I multiplied this side, I got 38. So is it proportional? No. Personally, here's how I would have done it. I'm gonna switch colors here. I know four laps times four equals 16. That's a multiplication pattern that I can see pretty quickly. Then I think it's two and a half times four going to equal 12. No, three times four equals 12. Two and four tenths times four is less than 12. So that's another way to check just multiplying straight across to see if you can make them equivalent fractions. All right, go ahead and try these last two on your own. All right, let's check our answers. So an example of two ratios that are equal and explain how you know. So let's see, I'm gonna just make two, two fourths and three sixths. How do I know? Well, they both simplify to one half. Or if you did cross products, four times three is 12, two times six is 12. So I could compare simplest form, cross products. Two ratios that are not equal. Let's say one half and three fourths. So they're already both in simplest form and they're not the same. Or if we did cross products, two times three is six, four times one is four. So they're not going to be equal.